This is a MOVA globe. It's an autonomous spinning globe that uses the magnetic field of the Earth to keep spinning forever. There's no power connected to the globe whatsoever, but it rotates and rotates. In fact, it'll just keep rotating forever. I want to show you the ingenious way that this uses the Earth's magnetic field and ambient light to autonomously rotate forever. I have this other globe here, which is also really ingenious as well. It uses permanent and electromagnets to keep this globe spinning and floating. But there's this pesky little cord that kind of takes away the magic from the globe spinning. But it sure needs this power as soon as I take it away. <laughs> but these globes just keep spinning with no power source. Well, it seems that there's no power source, but we forget about a major source of power that's all around us, light. These have small solar cells inside of them that collect ambient light from the room that passes through the globe. These in and of themselves are amazing because they're built to run on very low light. Only about 10% of the light gets through the globe, and even from just the light in the room, that's an extremely small amount of light. So only microcurrents of electricity are produced. So if you're going to use microcurrents to spin a huge globe like this, there has to be very minimal amounts of friction. The way that they achieve this very minimal friction is to suspend the whole sphere in liquid. So the inner sphere has to have no contact with the outer sphere. Now this is easy enough for the edges, but what about the top and bottom? If the inner sphere is too buoyant, it'll float to the top. If it's too heavy, it'll sink to the bottom. So to stay in the middle, it would have to be exactly neutrally buoyant. This is really hard to achieve. So let me show you an easier way to get it to float right in the middle. So for example, let's say I wanted to get this object to float right at the 60 milliliter line, right in the center of this beaker, but have the whole beaker filled of, with fluid. So there has to be liquid filling the entire thing and this thing floats right in the center. So now I have this completely filled with liquid and I can drop this in and it floats right at the center. <laughs> So what I did is I just put water in the bottom and mineral oil at the top. So the plastic sinks in the mineral oil but floats on the water. So I can raise it up by putting more dense fluid or lower it down by putting more light fluid. So you can just adjust the amount of dense liquid you have in the bottom to get the correct height you want. So you can get the globe exactly balanced in the center while still having fluid all around it. So what's cool is you can actually see the two liquids that this is floating on. So if you look down at the bottom here, you can kind of see a meniscus here. Shake it and wiggle it a little. So you can see there's two different types of liquid here. So now that we know how to achieve very low friction, we have to be able to use the electricity to turn the globe. We already know what we need to do is we need to use a motor, but there's a problem. Let's look at this motor here. In order for the shaft to spin, the motor needs to be anchored to something in place. So if we want the shaft to spin, we have to anchor the motor, or we can hold the shaft and the motor will spin. But you can see that the globe is completely free floating with no anchor points in the top or bottom. So how can you anchor the shaft so that you can spin the globe? Well, there's an invisible anchor that we use all the time in compasses. It's the Earth's magnetic field. If you have strong magnets suspended in a fluid, it'll always point towards the poles of the Earth. So if you have a strong magnet on the end of the shaft, it'll stay oriented with the Earth's magnetic field so that the motor can put some torque on the whole globe. So the globe is literally pushing off of the magnetic field of the Earth. This is an amazing engineering feat that leaves us with a globe that will spin in even the dimmest ambient light while pushing off of the magnetic field of the Earth. And before we continue, I'd like to thank the sponsor for this video, BetterHelp. These last few years have been difficult for everyone and one of the most important things you can do in times like this is to focus on your mental health. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service and it's 100% online. With BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 30,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. To get started, you just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy. That way, BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist from their network. Then you can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it's via text, chat, phone, or video call. You can message your therapist anytime and schedule a live session when it's convenient for you. And if your therapist isn't the right fit for you for any reason, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional charge as well. With BetterHelp, you get the same professionalism and quality you expect from in-office therapy but with a therapist who is custom picked for you, more scheduling flexibility at a more affordable price. So get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com actionlab, or you can click the link in the description. 
And thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to our experiment. So now that we know there's a strong magnet in here, let's see how it reacts to other strong magnetic fields around it. So now I've got a strong neodymium magnet. Let's see what happens when we bring it close to these. getting rocky. <laughs> so by flipping the poles of the magnet, I can get the magnet inside of that to spin. But even if I just put this right here, so it's disrupting the magnetic field of the earth, it should be able to anchor to this new magnetic field so the motor can still spin it around just fine. Okay, let's blast them with 100,000 lumens and see if it makes a difference. Three, two, one. Holy cow, that's bright. <laughs> oh, you can't even see it. Let me change the... Okay, I changed the shutter speed so you can see now. They're maybe spinning a little bit faster, but not much. This is really bright. So it doesn't look like it's moving any faster because the rotational rate is set by the motor speed, which doesn't change even with more light. They say there's no batteries in this whatsoever, so somehow they're able to limit the current going to the motor even with more light going to it. I'll put a link to the creator of this invention talking about how he thought of this. It's actually a nice inspiration for any of you inventors out there. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comments section and I'll see you next time.